king of the heavens before there was time. The king of all kings you will be. We bow down, we bow down and we count you the king. We bow down, we bow down and we count you the king. We bow down, we bow down and we count you the king. King of all kings you will be. You were Lord of creation and Lord of my life. Lord of the land and the sea. morning and welcome this morning to our worship service. On behalf of your family and friends here at United Baptist Church in Topsom, we want to extend to you our warmest welcome. Special thanks to those of you that are listening to WBCI 105.9 on your FM dial. You're listening right along with David as we're listening and sharing together this morning. Or some may be uh, watching along with Donna and Deb and Franny there on our web page, uh, that video link on ubctopsum.org. Special thanks to each and every one of you for joining us this morning. Our joke this morning comes in the way of Mary's Bible school teacher asked her to list the Ten Commandments in any order and... Mary gladly stood up and proudly proclaimed 6, 3, 5, 4, 8, 7, 10, 1, 9, and 2. <laughs> there was 10 of them, right? You bet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Several years back, and probably longer than what I would like to admit. In fact, uh, it was way back in 1992. Oh my goodness, I, it, it's just incredible, in my memory anyway, that, that it, it seems just like yesterday. But back in, the, in, in that day, Tom Cruise made a movie, starred in a movie, and it was a movie about a naval attorney, Lieutenant Caffey from the Office of the General Counsel. And Lieutenant Caffey was played by Cruz. And he was defending a couple of Marines who were facing a court martial. They were charged with the murder of a fellow Marine. Each time I'm scrolling through the TV channels, <laughs> and, and, and as I run across the title of the movie, A Few Good Men, I am somehow compelled to turn to it and watch it. I cannot tell you how many times that I have watched that movie, if not the whole thing, at least bits and pieces of it. And one of the scenes, and, and, and it's the one that almost everyone relates to this movie, is the final scene. The court is in session, and the base commander, the commander of the base, Colonel Jessup, it was played by Jack Nicholson, and uh, he's been surprisingly, he's been called to, to the stand by the defense, Tom Cruise. And the most memorable line and probably the most recited line of this whole movie was when Jack Nicholson's character says the famous words, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. <laughs> there was even some speculation that, that that may have been an improvision on, on uh, his part, on Jack Nicholson's part. But it became that most famous line of that movie. But I want to take a look at this morning is a line that uh, uh, Jack Nicholson said earlier on in that testimony that he was giving, given in that movie, in that scene, in that courtroom. And he was asked about commands and orders. Lieutenant Caffey had asked if at any point, if anyone under his command would not follow one of the colonel's orders. Colonel Jessup replied, we follow orders, son. We follow orders or people die. It's just that simple. 
Are we clear? Can't you just see Jack Nicholson's face as he says those lines? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It is no mistake that we have been talking about love over the past couple of weeks and how appropriate it is as we have celebrated just a couple of weeks ago that greatest demonstration of love at Easter. We celebrated Jesus' death on the cross for us and His resurrection from the dead on that third day for us. God loves us that much that He would pay the price for each and every one of us so that we can be with Him forever. Two weeks ago, we recognized how God loves us so much that He gave Jesus for our sacrifice and that it is through Jesus and through Jesus alone that we can come to the Father. And then last week, we read in 1 John that God is love and that His love is the only thing that we can rely on here on this earth. Everything else is in some type of transition, in some type of process or change. And this week, we're going to take a step back at, at a uh, piece, portion of Scripture taken from just before the crucifixion. It is part of the discourse that Jesus had with his disciples there in the upper room that Thursday night of the Last Supper. It is part of the last teaching moments that Jesus had with his disciples before his arrest, his trials, and his death. We read in John chapter 15, starting at verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that, you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you again for this glorious day, and I thank you for your message for each of us this day. Father, help us to give us the ears to hear and the heart to listen to what you have for us in your word. Continue to mold and make us into the people that you would have us to become. Continue your work in and through us, Lord, as we reach out to others. Continue your good and perfect will in and around us, Lord, and mold our wills so that it is in complete compliance with yours. Thank you, Father. And gracious God, as we come together, I just pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This portion of scripture that we just read, we find Jesus encouraging his disciples. He knows what they do not know yet. He knows of the intense emotions that his followers will be faced with in the upcoming hours and days. He knows the questions that will arise in their thoughts. He knows that they will have conflict within themselves as the coming events unfold. He knows that it's going 
to be tough. Jesus knows, and he is preparing them. He has been guiding them over the course of the past three years, and now his instructions here at this time are more concentrated, more intense. He's getting them ready. He's preparing them, yes, to face the next couple of hours, the next few days and weeks ahead with all of the emotional highs and lows and all of those deepest sorrows and highest joys and all of the uncertainty in between. He is preparing them for all of that. But he is also getting them ready for the months and the years ahead as this band of followers that he's teaching is getting built up for extraordinary opportunities. They will remember these teachings. They will remember Jesus' words of instruction and encouragement. And they will lean on what they have been taught, even to the point of death itself. Jesus, here in this passage, re reinforces his love for them. And he reminds them of that love's origin. He reminds those disciples that day and us here today that the Father's love is in us and is with us always. And we show our love for Him by keeping His commands. Particularly, verse 17 of our Scripture, that last verse that we just read, says this, This is my command. Love each other. <laughs> Remember our Jack Nicholson movie quote earlier? We follow orders or people die. We have an order from Jesus Christ himself to love each other. To love each other. And when we don't love each other, if we don't keep that command, how would this cause people to die? You see, when they do not see God's love in us, if they do not feel God's love flowing through us out to them, then they're not interested in what we have to offer them. <laughs> They, they do not desire to have for themselves the same thing that we have because they don't see a difference between what we have and what everybody else in the world has. When they don't see that difference, that love for each other, when they don't see that, they will turn their back on God. And the result is spiritual death. Spiritual death. But what is great is the reverse of that is, is true. When we do follow God's commands, as we reach out to others in His love and in His grace, then people will recognize a difference. That we do care. That we are interested. That we do want the best for them. And we'll help them to get that. And when they recognize this, they desire that same thing for themselves. And that leads them to a personal faith in Jesus Christ. And that result is in eternal life. Eternal life. And who better to display this very type of love for us? Oh my goodness, yes, 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 yes. God himself has, has demonstrated that love for each of us in sending his son, Jesus. But I also believe, I also believe that he has put this very type of love into many of our mothers. Oh, is it, this is Mother's Day, and we wish each and every mother a wonderful, wonderful day to be recognized, to be set apart. Happy Mother's Day to each of you. But I believe that God has placed in our mothers this very same kind of love. And i got to be careful because 
because I do not believe there is, there is some folks that will tell us that God has female characteristics. All right? Some have claimed that God has female characteristics and even have gone as far as stating that God must be female. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, folks, but that is putting the cart before the horse. God does not display anything human-like. God is not displaying anything human-like. No, <laughs> he doesn't. The right way to view this is that we, our mothers, demonstrate God's attribute of love. It is his love that they are demonstrating. It's not their love that he is demonstrating. It is his love that they are demonstrating, and they provide that for all of the rest of us to have that opportunity to witness it, just as he has blessed them with that love. As we celebrate this Mother's Day, we thank God for our mothers, and we marvel at God's love that they demonstrate for the rest of us. And as we try to reach out to those around us and make them aware that God's love is for them also. His love is there for them also. As we display that, making the difference in their lives so that they can see it and they can recognize it and they can accept it as their own. Let us pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, I do thank you again for this glorious day, and I thank you for your very presence with us. Speak to our hearts with your word today. And we do, Lord, here on this Mother's Day, thank you for our mothers. Oh, there may be some that are better at the job than others, but each and every one of us has had a mom a mom that thought enough of us to, to bring us into the world, has loved us enough to see that we have been taken care of in, in several different ways and means, but still that we were taken care of and cared for and loved. Thank you for our mothers, Lord, and thank you for the love that you have given to them to provide to the rest of us. Father, we thank you again for this time. And Father, we come before you with our heads and our hearts bowed in prayer as together we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.